Okay, so really just from a like health and safety aspect, um, as long as you've got reasons for all have reasonable shoes, we shouldn't go anywhere where there's any particular uh, long grass or anything, but do be mindful that on the hill, Brendan Hills, there are deer and therefore there are ticks. Yes. And therefore if there are if you do encounter any place that do check afterwards. Uh, we'll make our way on this. Principally so that we can you can see the, the route of the railway which and I've got a, a larger one here um, from Watchet and it passes down through the valley to Washford and then Washford through to Roadwater and then follows the little stream valley down through to a place called Coombe Row which was at the at the bottom of the hill then in front of them was the Brendan Hills which run in effect east to west and had to climb the last section from Coombe Row to the top of the Brendan Hill 800 feet uh, vertical climb and they did this by putting in an incline railway a one in four gradient and it's three quarters of a mile at one in four um, and then the projection was to put a railway along the top of the ridge road eventually going right out to the west valley to Eisen Hill and you'll notice on the map it's very faint but there's a, a dotted line which was the projected route of the Adesian railway in effect that was never built and the reason being that um, it just didn't prove profitable to do so and the, the expenditure of constructing that line um, meant that um, uh, there was insufficient ore to justify that expenditure. Um, so it terminated at a place called Gutworthy which is marked on the map but all the way along the top of the hills where you see the little red marks I know they're quite small but red marks that indicated where iron ore was exposed at the surface and this is where the uh, in fact the ancient Britons had uh, picked away at the surface and taken iron ore out um, but this was um, obviously some considerable time time ago um, and it wasn't really commercially sort of operated not until the Victorian era uh, which started in about 1853 so this is really what we'll be looking at uh, today. Did no rail go east of Ray Cross? Uh, there was a little narrow gauge, but that was a revival at east of Rolls Cross. That was during the 1907 period, but we'll mention that when we were uh, in that location. Okay. All right, um, so we'll make our way along the road and I'll make reference to one or two other things on the way. Um, principally here that here we are in Minehead um, and being by the coast the principal traffic route was by by coaster. Um, the road networks anything prior to um, the 18 or oh, 1760s was extremely basic mainly just cart tracks and we'll be going along and I'll mention when we, we, we come along sections of it of the old turnpike roads and these were roads privately constructed and you had to pay a toll to use those roads uh, which today is principally most of the A39 and we will be travelling along sections of that, that road um, Back in the, and let's say the Turnpike Act uh, for this particular area came in in um, 1765 and the Turnpikes ran uh, right up until 1877 before they finally were disbanded. And the reasons they were disbanded is that um, with the advent of the, not only the mineral line uh, as a railway, but also the um, Bristol to Exeter line had been extended from Taunton through to Watchet and then eventually was extended from Watchet through to Minehead and therefore the turnpikes uh, were no longer necessary. But say, I'll point out sections of that on, on, on our way.
the railway. As we get towards the end of the Blue Anchor Beach, on the right hand side, and you've got to be very observant to see it, um, there is, uh, you may see right in the very distance, there's a grey slated house that we can see on the right hand side of the road. Just in front of it, next to the uh, boundary, is a brick kiln. And this is where there was brickworks back in 1860. And they used to dig the clay from the hillside on, uh, just behind it, which is now a little copse of trees. And uh, there was a small brick kiln um, produced. Uh, so I might, I might be able to point it out um, when we arrive at that point. And then just a few yards on from that, and we'll, we'll see that, is the original toll, toll cottage. They've stacked a whole pile of material in front of you. You don't get the best view of the brick kiln, but you can just see it's a little red brick structure with a lean-to roof on it, uh, just behind this grey slated property on the right-hand side. Very low-grade building, <laughs> but that, that, I can assure you, is a, a grade two listed building. <laughs> Here we are just coming up and in the fork of the road here is the, the original toll, toll cottage just on the right here, the white fronted property. So we're now on the, the toll road. is eroding at an alarming rate and there's been a lot of concern that um, the uh, we may well lose that pub on the on the side there the blue anchor right. and also uh, if that fails then also this road would then have to be diverted as well Another indication on this road, as you come around this bend, if those who aren't familiar, there's a, a little uh, pho photovoltaic sensor on the top here, which is monitoring the cliffs. And if there's any subsidence, um, that will meant to show a sign saying stop. But um, <laughs> whether it will work, we don't know. But the cliff is, we're right on the cliff at this point. Crops over. Again, here on the on the turnpike here in West Street, which is uh, obviously since long gone. We'll be here for about, about 10 minutes. Okay, um, 
we're here on the, um, the west here, up here. Um, but during the when this was uh, constructed, um, they had to provide also a means of loading and unloading the vessels. Um, originally, before the harbour was constructed, they tended to use what's called the town slip, which is now contained behind the marina. Um, the vessels were brought in at low and there, low tide, they would, with by horse and cart, bring the ore and load them into the vessels and then wait for them to refloat and then go out. Clearly, again, that was not an economic way of transporting the ore across. Um, so they had to get the right to build the harbour and extend it. Um, the harbour at the time um, was owned by the, uh, or believed to be owned by the Earl of Egremont, uh, which is now called the, the Wyndham Estates. And um, the railway company, or the, the, the Ebervale company uh, operating the mines, started to extend and build this park and the Earl objected to that and they had to cease work until they got the necessary consents. There was a lot of argument over um, what should be done or what shouldn't be done and what duties they had to pay and whose, whose rights it was. Uh, the long and the short of it is that they had to get somebody in in the end that arbitrated and eventually awarded that it was an asset of the town. And as the Earl had received lots of Jews over the years and had constructed himself this very nice esplanade during the 1840s that um, the um, railway company would be permitted to build uh, the, the pier. But here's a, a contemporary shot for 1875 and you can see that only the first section up to here was masonry. The extended part was a purely a timber breakwater and also the East Key was a timber structure right the way through. Stone filled but timber, timber construction. But there was also a jetty that came out into the harbour at this point, went out through, that, and that enabled vessels to come each side of that there and that the ore could be uh, tipped then into uh, the vessels. However, um, come the once the mines had finished, and they finished um, in 1883, there was no more mineral traffic coming down here, but the track and the pier was still here right up until um, the 18, 1898, when the railway finally closed. But in the last year of 1900, as it says here, there was a big storm, and the whole of this harbour was smashed to pieces and um, it did cause a lot of, a lot of problems because there, there was um, no finance to reconstruct it. Um, but the townsfolk got together and formed what was called the Watchet Urban District Council. And that was the first time there was a, a council here which enabled them to get funding um, to then reconstruct the harbour. There was another storm a bit later and there was again more damage but they did eventually get it uh, rebuilt. Basically, as you see today, it's made out of concrete blocks, but you've got this section, some of it has still got some of the old masonry uh, contained in it. Uh, the lighthouse, just out of interest at the end, uh, is the one that had been there back in those days, because that was made by a company called Hennick and Company in Bridgewater, uh, and dates from about 1860. It's a cast iron lighthouse, um, and that was again in position um, when they reconstructed the hull. Okay, uh, and what we have in front um, is some of the original rails that uh, were uncovered um, just a few years ago. Everybody believed at the time that, uh, that they'd all disappeared, but um, there were people in the town here that said no the rounds are still there they've just been tarmacked over and um, these were uh, exposed so that you can see exactly where the track um, came through but these really date um, from the reworked period in about 1907 
because there should have been a branch or rail to run out um, to the jetty. But of course, that was uh, was not reconstructed when they um, rebuilt the harbour. Yeah, yeah, he's a sailor that went through a lot of the characters. 